second lesson this morning comes from Luke's Gospel, the first chapter, verses 67 through 80. Then John's father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke this prophecy. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty Savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors, and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham, to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our New Testament passage today continues the story of the nativity in Luke's Gospel. Last week we heard how the angel Gabriel made a startling announcement to the elderly priest, Zechariah, at the temple in Jerusalem regarding his wife, Elizabeth. After that, the angel visited a young woman named Mary in Nazareth with a scandalous announcement. It seemed that each woman, Elizabeth and Mary, by the amazing power of God's Holy Spirit, was going to be delivering a son who would have a major role in God's plan of redemption for humanity. Zechariah was completely blown away by the announcement given to him in the temple, and he registered his doubt with the angelic messenger Gabriel. Gabriel caused him to become unable to speak until the birth of that child. Today our story jumps ahead a few months to the actual birth of the child to be born to Zachariah and Elizabeth. And in this passage, the townspeople have gathered around the family at the naming ceremony. And the people are completely thrilled and excited that this old couple has been blessed with a son. When the baby was named John, Zechariah, who had been mute since the angel Gabriel had spoken with him, the priest finally started speaking, and he began praising God. And that startled the townsfolk. Our text says that Zechariah was filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit as he shared these prophetic words in the form of a song. His son John would have an important duty in God's coming redemption. John was to become the forerunner and a prophet. John would prepare the way for the Lord, and he would declare the Lord's salvation through the forgiveness of sins. Zechariah goes on to prophesy that in God's great mercy, God will cause the dawn from on high to break upon us, to give us light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. These are the first words that come out of Zechariah's mouth since he was given the news of his wife's impending pregnancy. The old, <clears throat> the old priest has had much to contemplate in the silence of the previous nine months. And as I think about this image of the holy man being unable to speak for so long, I imagine
imagine that Zachariah spent much time listening to others, listening to the surprise and delight of his wife, and listening to the people all around him, hearing their hopes and their dreams, wondering at the future of his unborn son, and listening to the whisperings of God through the stories of his people, studying the Hebrew scriptures, reading the words of the prophets who came in times past, and contemplating the words of that angel who had come to him in the temple, the angel who had said so much, but had left out so many details. And I imagine him in these intervening months of listening, Zechariah was open to imagining a vision of redemption, not only for his people, the people of Israel, but for all of humanity and for all of creation. The longings of Israel, the long suffering of the world, the struggles of daily life, and the societal pains of oppression and injustice. Thinking about the multiple ways that people can hurt one another, the ways we divide ourselves from each other, how we erect barriers to keep others out and close ourselves off from seeing possibilities through the eyes of people who understand things in different ways than we do. Perhaps Zachariah, looking at the struggles of humanity and the darkness that surrounds us, began to see what God was up to. Zechariah well knew the promises of the prophets and the covenants that God had made with God's people of old. And Zechariah believed in those promises. Maybe this was the time for those promises to be revealed and realized. Maybe this is what they had been waiting for all along. And so, unable to speak aloud his thoughts, he allowed them to dwell within, to percolate within his mind. And then at this naming ceremony of his son, the Holy Spirit of God helped him to form those thoughts and images into this amazing prophetic song. He spoke the words of redemption in the present tense, that this redemption has already been accomplished through God's Savior. And his son, his son John, would prepare the way for the one who was to come. Christians believe that in Jesus Christ, God's promises have been fulfilled. Christ is the Redeemer, and the promises of God have indeed been kept. But Christians also know that we live in the tension of waiting for the full realization of that fulfillment. We live in the in-between time, what is often called the already, but not yet. And that is what Advent reminds us of. We wait. We listen. We yearn for the fulfillment of God's promises, and we anticipate the birth of our Savior. And then on Christmas Eve, we celebrate the arrival of the one who will and has made all things new. While the secular world begs us into the early jollity of the holidays, the frenzy of decorating and shopping and rapping and the singing of reindeer songs and snowman songs and the brightness of the colored lights that twinkle outside people's houses. The season of Advent quietly pulls us back in. Advent reminds us to be silent, to give time to the songs of the prophets. To celebrate the promises of peace and justice 
equality, and to anticipate the light of God that is coming into the world. That is who Jesus is. He is the light that shines in the darkness. The darkness cannot overcome it. This is why we celebrate the holidays. The parties and the gifts and the decorations are all outward expressions of the joy we feel. But remember that in the midst of the celebrations, people are still grieving. And wars are still being waged. And children are still going to bed hungry. And fires and earthquakes still destroy. And people who are alone long for a simple touch of kindness. Friends, our hope is in nothing less than the presence of God Almighty taking on human flesh to dwell among us. In Him, there is no fear or pain. And in Him, there is nothing who can ever separate us from the love of God. This is the hope and the joy that we are called to share with others. Friends, this is the song that we sing.